Cartera is an interesting game for many reasons. On one hand, its simplistic design makes it perfect for just about anyone to throw themselves into. On the other hand, a lack of control over the game can quickly lead to it becoming a snooze fest, with the only thing between you and death being an enemy with a reflect modifier. That is not to say that the game is bad, but there's nothing that makes you want to see it through to the end, especially given how long it can take to get there. Cartera plays like a board game mixed with roguelike elements. You begin with a base set of stats that can be modified based on the currency that you acquire between runs. These can be used to modify your health and attack stats, as well as navigation, though the game never makes it a priority. A set of cards is placed on multiple boards and you can swipe in the direction that you want to go, interacting with the event that's on the tile, whether that be health, an enemy, or a choice. After you do so, you can move on. Each interaction often causes your chaos to increase, leading to stronger buffs and enemies. Rinse and repeat. That is the primary formula. Your goal is to get strong enough to take on bosses that allow you to gather cosmic shards to take on the cosmic king. One slight problem with that is that not all the bosses are available to you in your first few runs, and there's so much randomness in the game that it's insane. Rather, you're going to be unlocking bosses and additional skills through a leveling track or forest pass as the game calls it. Leveling is based on the number of cards that you turn over in any given run. I believe that these are unique cards because I had a run lasting well over 400 turns and was only granted points for 100 of them. After 2 hours of playing, I am still 2 levels away from unlocking the first king, which is level 12. It looks like you need to get to level 60 to beat the game, so you can do the math on that. I think it's fair to address what the game does well. For starters, I do think that the graphics in the game are well done. I've heard multiple people say that it all looks AI generated, and if that's the case, good on the AI. I think the constant risk and reward of the chaos system works well when it works. There are times when you stumble across a certain card that basically makes you stay at one chaos level, making the game trivial. I also think that this game does a good job at allowing you to feel stronger, starting your character at only 8 damage while at the end of your round having over 50 with over 100% lifesteal is a power trip for sure. Lastly, I did actually like the way that you got stronger instead of just XP. You'll fight the cards that you come across and they will give you specific buffs or debuffs. All of that being said, there are some huge red flags to enjoying the game to the fullest. The first is the Forest Pass. While there does not appear to be a paid way to expedite this as it currently stands, the amount of time needed to see the full game is insane, and that alone should create cause for concern. This needs to be fixed. The second is the amount of randomness in the game. There is a lot of it, and unless you come across a card that lets you see all the cards on the board, you're at the whim of RNG to make it through your run. Add to the fact that cards can transport you to a completely different area and force you to fight enemies, and there's a problem. I had one specific run that I was intentionally trying to end because I did not understand how to fight the boss, but I was too strong, and even the highest level enemies didn't stand a chance. The game needs to be more clear at the end, even if you do not have any bosses unlocked. The game could have gone on forever had I not found an enemy that would reflect damage. Lastly, there's a lot less to see than I would have liked. I played for roughly 2 hours and after checking out the game collection log, I had only not seen maybe 40 out of the hundreds of possible cards. Another weird thing that I noticed was the score multiplier should be multiplied by 10 to equal the gems that I was awarded at the end as well. Overall, Kardara leaves a lot to be desired. For starters, I don't know what it is trying to be, especially with the lack of endgame content. At some point, you'll be trying to make a run end itself if you make it far enough. I don't feel like I'll be seeing the end of the game, which is a shame because it does have the foundation for a pretty fun game. It is very simple, which allows you to understand enough to survive. But once you realize that you have limited control due to being unable to see the cards before you, a lot of the luster wears off. Even priced at $2.99, you'll likely walk away disappointed, even if you actually did have fun.